And we are live with not one of our normal sessions. We've actually got a couple of players out, so we are going to be playing a fun little game that uh, I have a tendency to pull up whenever we have these sorts of situations, uh, just because it's really easy to put together and definitely a lot of fun. So we're going to be playing Everyone is John, uh, which Rebecca and Wayne are familiar with, but Jason, this is going to be your first time. So... Let's go over the rules real quick. Uh, they're really simple. It's a one-page uh, system. Um, so we're just going to kind of go in the same order as they're presented here. So you'll notice on your character sheets on the right, there is a big box for willpower. Uh, since you're using these sheets digitally, you probably won't need all that space. Uh, you could just uh, use backspace, but that's all right. So willpower um, is basically... A, or I guess I should go over uh, the basic um, kind of shtick of the game. So in Everyone is John, you play as an insane man who has multiple personalities. And uh, you get dropped into various unusual situations where you uh, have to then deal with whatever's going on while trying to achieve your goals. And each personality has its own goals and its own voice and its own skills. And the different voices use willpower in order to boost their performance or to take control of John. So willpower is a pool of points that you can use for taking control of John by bidding uh, in various situations, which we'll get to later. And you can also use them to boost roles. So if you want to make sure that you succeed in an action, you can spend willpower for a bonus there. Um, what else do you use willpower for? I think that's about it, unless I'm forgetting something. Um, next up is, oh, and I guess I should say you start off with 10, um, generally. And there's one, um, one case where that wouldn't happen, and we'll get to that in the next section. Skills. So, uh, each voice has two or three skills, depending on where you start willpower-wise. If you start at 10 willpower, then you have two skills. And if you start at th at th with uh, three skills, you start with seven willpower. And um, skills are just loosely defined um, descriptions of things that you're capable of and things you're good at. Uh, you want to leave them um, fairly generic. Um, and I've actually got some character uh, examples put together that I'll read over so you kind of get an idea of how to put your character sheet together. Um, then next up is your obsessions. You're going to have three obsessions of differing difficulties. So your level one obsession is going to be fairly easy to, to um, succeed at, but it's not going to net you very many points. It's going to net you one point. Your level two obsession is going to be a little bit more difficult, but will net you two points. And your level three obsession is going to be very difficult, um, but will net you three points. Um, and the points will be tallied up at the end of the game. And um, whoever has the most points, quote unquote, wins. But even though the game is technically competitive, it really is more about just goofing around and uh, having a structure where to, to make jokes in. So I wouldn't stress too much out over that unless you're very competitive, like Rebecca, who usually wins. Um, so next up, we have uh, who John is. I kind of went over the basics, um, but. Um, we'll just start with the more gameplay oriented. So John is not very competent. In fact, he's pretty bad at just about everything. So if you, if your voice has a skill, and this is where those skills come in, then, uh, and everything in this game is D6s, by the way. Um, so if you have a skill in something, then all you have to do is roll a three or better, and you succeed at whatever thing that is. And if you don't have a skill in that, you have to roll a six to succeed. And John, being pretty incompetent, is going to need rolls for anything that a normal person could theoretically mess up. Um, not st super simple stuff like walking around or opening doors, but uh, if you're trying to do something like, say, uh, chop a tomato without cutting your fingers off, I'm probably going to make you roll for that. Um... So uh, the 
to become the active voice, what you're going to do is, and I'll tell you when to bid for control, but what you're going to do is you're going to have a pool of willpower, and I'm going to call for a bid, and everyone, normally you would have uh, physical tokens, and you would hold out your hand, and then once everyone's got their hand out, you reveal how many you've bid, but since we're going over roll 20, what you're going to do is you're going to whisper, so that's forward slash W, and the name of the person you're whispering to, which in this case would be GM, me, and then your message. Um, so what I'm going to need you to do is, um, I'm actually not sure if you can send a role to just a person. Huh. Um, I'm not sure that roll 20 can do that. So if not, uh, Jason, do you have access to some D6s that you can roll physically? Or no, I'm thinking of rolls. Never mind. <laughs> uh, complete brain fart there. Um, so that's unnecessary. Rolls are fine. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to just message me your bid. Um, and that's going to be however many you want to bid, including none. Um, and then once I have a message from everybody, I'll reveal the winner. If there's a tie, then you roll off until one or the other person rolls higher, and then that person has control until something occurs to make them lose control. So um, there are a few different ways that the voices can lose control. Um, one of them is failing a roll. Another one is John taking damage. Um, or if John gets bored, he'll doze off and then... Uh, yes, I saw your message, Wayne. Um, and so if John gets bored, he'll doze off, and all of the characters will regain one willpower, um, but when he awakens, uh, there will be a, a new bid for control. And then the way the game ends is either when we decide we're tired of it and ready to wrap it up, which has happened occasionally when our games have gone very long, um, and then usually what will happen is everyone will ro run out of willpower and the game will end there and we'll tally up the winner. Uh, t -t 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 I think that's everything there. Like I said, the rules are right in front of you if you want to read them further. Um, and so the way we're going to start out the game is before, I, before John wakes up and I describe your situation, we're going to get a bid. And we're going to find out who is the first person to take control. And then I'm going to describe the situation and what's going on. And then you'll just kind of go from there, trying to keep John from dying and fulfill your different obsessions. Um, so now that you know what's involved in creating your character, which is just choosing how many skills you have, what they are, and choosing your three obsessions, I'm going to read a few examples that I have put together real quick. So, um, one of them, um, I generally name the voices just to kind of get an idea of who they are. Um, and so my first two examples are the Joker, and some example skills would be explosives, chemistry, control the poor slash criminals, infectious laughter, and improvised weapons. Some examples of level one obsessions would be cause mayhem, make someone laugh, and ruin someone's day. Some examples of level 2 obsessions would be acquire a new suit, with acquire in quotes, acquire, also in quotes, deadly weaponry, or thwart a rival's plan. And those are three different examples. You would just pick one. Um, and then an example of level 3 obsessions would be destroy a rival but not kill them, kill a notable figure, or plunge an entire city into anarchy. My second example would be Batman slash Bruce Wang, uh, his example skills would be gadgetry, skilled detective, access to money, fueled by a desire to protect the innocent, and excellent in combat. Some example level 1 obsessions would be save someone from harm, defeat a thug slash bully, solve a mystery, disappear when someone is talking to you but their back is turned. Some examples of level 2 obsessions would be jail a bad guy without getting jailed yourself, take down a crime boss, or dress like a bat for an extended period of time. Some examples of level 3 obsessions would be save a large number of people from a major cri crisis, find an Alfred who is willing to be your butler, and gain a semi-permanent sidekick and name him slash her Robin. Uh, so, uh, that's a lot pretty quickly. Are there any questions so far? I'm going to take that as a no. Um, so you guys should all have your character sheets. Um, so let's start off with um, 
the things that are public knowledge, which are going to be your voice's name, your skills, and um, that will also tell us how many starting willpower you have. So is anyone already kind of have an idea of what they want to do? Um, I have a question. Okay. Is, is it normal to base our voice off of like an existing character, or should we just make stuff up? It's totally fine either way. Um, another one of my examples that I didn't read was um, Crazy Hobo Guy. Uh, and <laughs> his skills were <laughs> blend in anywhere, deadly body odor, pleading gaze, excellent scavenger, complete knowledge of location, and born lucky. His level one obsession examples were eat food, drink alcohol, and pee somewhere you shouldn't, or scare children. Obsessions for level 2 were steal something worth more than $30 and get away with it, sleep in a strange place, or stay dirty for an entire game, which gets you 10 points uh, because it requires you to um, do something. You can't repeat it like most actions. Um, and then obsessions for level 3 would be rob a bank and get away alive, have a fancy dinner with a celebrity, and win the lottery. So it's kind of just whatever you want. Uh, if you've got something that kind of helps you, like, uh, think of a voice like, you know, you want to be a Dracula character, or you want to be, uh, I don't know, President Trump, uh, you know, that can help you thinking of how your voice would act, uh, but it's not necessary to actually base it off of anything real. You can just go with any idea that you have. Cool, cool. All right, so um, is anyone ready to go, or do I need to just pick someone and we'll work it out? Okay, well, I am going to pick on Rebecca then. So uh, do you have an idea for what kind of a voice you'd like to go for? No! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you want uh, something just randomly generated? Maybe. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, how about... Uh, Julie Graham, a 20-year-old outgoing art student uh, who is angry about, foot th about her football team losing. She always wears body armor. She comes from a working-class family and is hiding a terrible secret concerning her son. Or Ned K Neil Kennedy, 29, unstable geography student. Neil is an unstable geography student who is addicted to caffeine. He always wears false eyebrows. He strongly dislikes his father. He's hiding a terrible secret concerning his wooden spoon collection. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm so confused. <laughs> And no, Wayne, I don't know the answer to your question on uh, WhatsApp, because I don't know what the setting is yet. You'll see why when we actually start. All right, Rebecca, well, I'll give you a little bit more time to think about it then. Uh, so, Jason, do you have any ideas? Uh, yes, I do. All right. Let's hear them. I was going to base it off of my favorite League character, Diana, and she's, like, moon-themed. Okay. So, um... She can see in the dark, and she has a speed boost when she's in moonlight, or maybe just, like, an all-around intelligence boost. I don't know how to phrase that one. Okay, so, like, better in the dark, or better when it's dark? Yeah. And then that can be part of see in dark, too. Just, uh, 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 just like, superhuman abilities when in shadow. Superhuman in dark. Got it. Okay. Second skill. Um... Don't know. But I have my obsessions. Okay, cool. Um, my level one is to pray to the moon. My okay. level two is to go an entire day without being in direct sunlight. 
and my level three is to pray to the moon from the top of a mountain. Okay, that sounds great. Um, so do you have any ideas on the uh, second skill? Uh, like I said, you want to keep them fairly generic, so kind of like how we changed uh, seeing in the dark and being faster in the dark to just being better in the dark. You know, you want mm -hmm. them you want them to be fairly encompassing because otherwise, with only two skills, they're not going to come up often. Right. Okay. Um. No empathy. Okay. Cool. Not sure how that one will come up yet, but should be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, perfect. Rebecca, are you ready for us to circle around to you, or should we um, hit Wayne first? Um, I'm building my character, but... Okay, cool. Then we'll hit, no, we'll hit up Wayne first. That. Yeah, we'll hit up Wayne first, and then you can let us know. Uh, so Wayne, you have any ideas for your voice? Are you dead? I think we lost him. He's talking. <laughs> well, he's not lighting up, so Discord doesn't think he is. Do you need to push to talk, Wayne? Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. Cool. Um, I was saying that my voice uh, is a member of Anonymous. Okay. Perfect. So my voice's skills would include uh, stealth, which... I presume would be both online and offline. Sounds fair. <clears throat> and, um, and so uh, since these are general, if at any point you uh -huh. think your skill applies, just let me know. And um, I'll generally, unless it's a complete stretch, I'll roll with it. <laughs> okay. So skill one would be stealth. Okay. Skill two would be uh, technology. Okay. And you're going with just the and two skills? skills? Oh, you're going with three skills. Yeah. Well, okay. um, I forget. Do, do you get extra willpower if you only take two? Um, you get the default willpower if you take two. You get less willpower if you take three. So you, you'll start with ah. ten. If you have two skills, you're st you'll start with ten. If you mm -hmm. have three skills, you'll start with seven. Okay, so I'll just go with those two skills. Okay, now. cool. Okay, so what is your what are your obsessions? I feel like level one has to be um, troll someone. Yeah, trolling, and then uh, level two would probably be um, like a a small scale attack. Stick it to the man. Mm hmm. And then level three would be uh, collapsing a government. Perfect. Hey, Thomas, I want to change my second skill. All right. My second skill should be wilderness. Okay. So instead of empathy, it's wilderness. Yes. Cool. Perfect. All right, Rebecca, are you ready? Mostly, yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> just let us know what you got. Let's start with your name. Agnes. From the Minions movie. Oh, is that the... Is that the little one. Always oh, obsessed with candy and unicorn. Oh, the little girl? The, the It's so fluffy I could die, is that her? Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Perfect. Uh, skills. Um, the only one that I came up with so far was the extremely convincing puppy dog eyes, and I haven't figured out the second one. 
Okay, so we're going to have adorableness. Um, hmm, what would be a second one? Uh, Wins carnival games. <laughs> yeah, lucky. Yeah, a lucky work. All right, so level one obsession. Eat candy slash sweet. All right, and level two obsession. Acquire something unicorn thing. Okay, and is level three acquiring an actual unicorn? I hadn't figured out level three, but acquire an actual unicorn sounds appropriate. Or you could do like melt the heart of the villain. We're gonna go with yeah. ride an actual unicorn. <laughs> there's no guarantee there's gonna be a quote unquote villain. Sure. Alrighty, will. perfect. So Riding now an actual unicorn sounds like something Deadpool would put as his ultimate goal. <laughs> um. So this ended up exactly the way we always do. Technically, you're not supposed to share your uh, <laughs> your obsessions with the group, um, but we always end up doing it anyway, which is fine. Uh, we're not super mean about trying to actually win the game generally, so uh, I think we're fine. So um, I've got those written down. You guys can write them down as long as you've got it somewhere you've got access to it, and you can keep track of how much willpower you have. We're good to go. Everyone went with two skills, so you guys will start out with two or a ten um, willpower each. And so next, we're just going to set up the location, which normally um, I'll start with a short little blurb and see where it takes us. But today, I thought it would be fun to uh, get a little Mad Libs action in there. So I've actually written up sort of a Mad Libs, and you guys are going to fill it out, and we're going to see what kind of nonsense John has found himself in. So, um, I need an adjective. That's a cool idea. Preposterous. All right. And a noun. Cathedral. Okay, and another adjective. Fluffy. Oh. <laughs> and a plural noun. Balls. <laughs> All right, um, a verb. Squander. Uh, let's see, another noun? You come up with good words, Jason. <laughs> I just go for out there. Wait, what was this one, another noun? Yes, another noun. Hero. Uh, could you say that again? Hero. Okay. So are we talking Batman or are we talking sandwiches? <laughs> I actually, that's a great. Maybe we go with the delicious snack. All right. I we'll see. Um, and then another noun. Computer. Um, an adjective. Quiet. Um, a noun. I feel like we need to go with unicorn. 
All right. Um, and then an adjective. Waxy. All right, and an event. Bat mitzvah. Uh, a noun. Ham. Do you say ham? Pan. Oh, pants. <laughs> Close. <Got it. laughs> Not even. Um, and then an adjective. Obsessive. Uh, a verb. Touching. Uh, an adjective. Green. And a sound. <laughs> um, and an action. Jaunting. A place. Jerusalem. Oh, man, I was going to say Istanbul. <laughs> that was cool. We were on the same wavelength. <laughs> A state of mind. Euphoric. An action. Kick. Lappy. I'm going to go with kick. Heard that first. Kick works better. Noun. Uh, and then an object. Candle. And another object. Backpack. Uh, a person. William Shakespeare. I can't remember how to spell Shakespeare. Um, an accusatory question. The fuck? <laughs> All right, a place. Istanbul. And an angry threat. Attack! Uh, that's more of a swear word than an actual angry threat. Okay. Someone else can go with that one. I don't make angry threat. <laughs> well, in the words of Ahmed the Dead Terrorist, I can't! Perfect. Alrighty. Are people ready to hear the uh, horror that we have just created? Yes. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> so, uh, everyone has uh, their starting 10 willpower. Please whisper to me through the chat uh, your bids, and we'll see who has control as we start out. At some point, somebody's going to get it wrong, the whisper, and <laughs> just announce it in the middle of the chat. Yeah. Uh, not, a, not a huge deal. 
So it's forward slash W space GM space and then your message. So forward slash W is a whisper. Um, the next bit is the name of who you're whispering to, which you can either type out my name or you can do just GM. And then the message is the third argument. Perfect. GM All right. is much easier than Finlay. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Jason, you are coming out strong with a bit of four. Uh, please subtract four from your total willpower. And those of you who did not win the bid, do not lose any willpower so you may retain your ten. So, John awakens dressed only in preposterous cathedrals and fluffy balls. <laughs> Squandering about, John realizes that he is currently standing in a hero, or pa perhaps in a computer. It's quiet to tell. John isn't sure what could have happened last unicorn, but it must have been one waxy bat mitzvah. The smell of pants is obsessive, and John can still touching the sounds of green eek and jaunting from Jerusalem. For a moment, John, euphoric, and begins to kick all of his, all of his trees before finally spotting his ca candle on the backpack next to him. He picks it up and sees written there a message from William Shakespeare. It reads, John, the fuck, come to Istanbul or I kill you. Yikes, better get going. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you are uh, you are sitting. <laughs> 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 so um yeah john is sitting in uh, a back room <laughs> evidently lying on top of a hero sandwich um or he might be standing inside of a computer he's really not sure it's uh it's quiet to tell evidently and um man it must have been one waxy bot misfit last night because the pants smell is obsessive um so <laughs> I think all you really know at this yeah, point. Really dressed in balls, so. <laughs> yes, and you are you are wearing. P p p p p I can't even speak. Preposterous cathedrals and fluffy balls, and that's it. Um, so uh, right I'm now. I'm guessing that it's like a suit with cathedrals printed all over it. No, 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 no. It's like that? it's like little cathedral tchotchkes, all stitched together oh. with uh, yarn. And then a bunch uh -huh. of fluffy balls, and by fluffy balls that means like, you know that the the ball sack purses, basically a bunch of those. They're just very hairy. Um, so yeah, uh, you have a door and several windows. Uh, as far as you can tell, it's currently twilight. Looking outside, um, the way we I'm normally. I'm not sure if Rebecca's going to be with us much longer. Uh oh, she's she's been laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the way we normally play, uh, everyone is John, is that I will actually play John, and when you want him to do something, you'll talk to him, and John will actually talk back, and he'll generally do what you say. Um, but um, it's just a little bit more um interesting having the two-way conversation with the voice. Uh, we'll see if that works for us. If not, we can change that up. The big exception is that if you are talking to someone else, you can just directly talk for John. That way, it's not some weird three-way conversation. Um, so yeah, Jason, you are in charge. You can now get John to do whatever you want. What was that about a three-way? Plomp, plomp. Um... Wait, so I thought you were going to play John, and then... Well, so, so you I basically... I misunderstood. What, what happens is you'll talk to, to John, who I will voice. So it would be like, uh, your character might be like, Hey, John, let's jump out that window. And John would be like, Are you sure about that? That sounds pretty dangerous. And you're like, Yeah, John, do it! He's like, Okay! And he's going to try. Okay. So, John, look out the window. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of getting dark out there. I see uh, maybe a couple of stars poking through, but uh, it seems to be some sort of a city. There's a bunch of lights on. Um, I can't really tell for sure. Uh, I think I might still be in a computer or a hero sandwich. Ignore the euro and find the moon. Okay. 
Uh, I don't see the moon yet, but uh, there there's a little bit of like a silvery glow on the horizon, so it, it might be rising. Um, just walk towards it. Okay. Um, I'm I'm walking into a wall. Um, so it's like a video game where the character just walks forward into a wall. I can't really go any further. Okay, find a door then. Okay, Dumb. yeah, there, there's a door. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> there's a door, <laughs> and there's some windows um, in this room. Um, so just check the door then. Yeah, check the door. Okay, uh, so he walks up, and uh, John uh, grabs a hold of the doorknob and turns it. And uh, immediately, the smell of pants becomes even more obsessive. And um, you can still hear the sounds of Green Eek just coming off of the stereo system in front of you. There's a whole bunch of uh, dark-skinned individuals wearing uh, bandanas and ponchos and uh, sombreros, but they do not look to be actual Hispanics. It seems like it was some sort of a weird costume party. You just came in the wrong costume. Something must have happened there. Um, but they're all uh, snoring on the floor with bottles of tequila spilling around everywhere. Uh, there's one guy who's kind of like still trying to slow dance with a mop in one corner, but that's about all the action that's going on out there. Interesting. Is there a way through this room? Is there a there, way out the other end? Yes. Uh, so if you go outside, there's uh, swinging doors, like in an Old West saloon, on the other side of the room. However, you'll have to cross the room full of bodies to get there. Uh, yeah, let's just cross the room full of bodies. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be a skill check, unless you're completely unworried about, you know, tripping on someone and um, waking them up. Um... Now, right now, the lights are on, so you would need to do something about that if you want to use your uh, Skilled in the Dark ability. Nope. All right. <laughs> so, you trip over one of the characters. Uh, John smashes face first into a bottle of tequila, shattering it with his forehead and uh, cutting himself in several places. And you hear uh, <laughs> a very disgruntled groan from behind you. Bid for control. All right, and just need a bid from Rebecca. All right, Rebecca, you now have control. Uh, John is lying on the floor um, with several lacerations across his forehead, and uh, he's slowly trying to push himself back up to his feet. And from behind you, you, uh, you hear a very angry man with a clearly fake Mexican accent going, Oi, hombre, you just tripped on my balls, man! I thought we were wearing the balls. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I knew, but I was wearing the balls. I didn't mean to trip on you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's going to be a roll, and that will have your adorableness uh, skill to help mitigate the anger. Oh, man. You succeeded. <laughs> I, yeah, that's all right, man, I guess. I guess it was accident, all right. Uh, <laughs> you be careful out there dressed like that, though, man. You know, it is, it is Mexican week here in in uh, Israel, so uh, you don't necessarily want to be dressing like uh, someone from the Eiffel Tower, eh? You know what? I think you're totally right. Uh, can we trade costumes? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> this costume's all wet and sweaty, and I think I peed in it anyway. You can have it. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, 
you are now dressed in a uh, poncho, some leather chaps, a uh, pair of jeans, a uh, sombrero, and um, all of it is just as sticky and wet as the guy described it. <laughs> all right, will you be careful, man? I'm going to go play with my balls. The ones on my suit. The ones on my suit. Uh, <laughs> I just got to be back in this room you came out of, man. All right, talk to you later. <laughs> I'm trying to get to Groot. <laughs> We're not Gru, uh, Gru from Despicable Me. My Mexican accent is becoming worse by the second. <laughs> I like your Mexican accent, and I also like you becoming Gru. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so John has extricated himself from the situation and uh, manages to make the rest of the way to the door. Uh, or I should say the... Is there the... any candy or soda or is it just tequila? Um, tequila is boring. There is some uh, margarita mix, which is basically juice, um, and some spicy uh, cinnamon candies. Yeah. Uh, Let's keep going. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, John uh, makes his way to the door and opens it immediately as he uh, as he does so. Uh, you he, you can see that the sky outside has uh, darkened since when John awoke, uh, and the moon seems to be just now cresting over the horizon. Stars are beginning to dot the horizon, um, but as John kind of moves his head around, he realizes that stars are actually way too close to be in space. Um, and looking out into the streets, uh, they are all paved solid black in this perfectly smooth, reflective sheen. And every once in a while, someone on a, uh, a, a bicycle, well, not a bicycle exactly, a uh, motorcycle trailing a beam of uh, orange or blue light will zip by. Oi. You said we're in Israel, so boy, vague. Well, actually, John said he thought he was standing in either a hero or a computer, so. But the Mexican guy said that it was Mexican week in Israel. Yep. And if you look, you can actually see the Temple Mount um, with uh, actually two temples on top of it and uh, many other uniquely uh, Jerusalem. <laughs> um, landmarks, most of which I'm not familiar with. I vote we go south. Okay. Towards uh, the moon. <laughs> towards the moon. <laughs> All right. Uh, how do you? I don't know. I'm judging. <laughs> <laughs> how do you plan to do that? John is currently on foot, um, standing by the street. I'm going to get a big pogo stick. I'm going to jump on it. <laughs> All right. Uh, there is a very large pogo stick um, just hanging, uh, hang, or, uh, yeah, hanging from uh, a large uh, pogo stick pole um, by the street. There are three others there. One of them is uh, hot pink. Uh, striped with neon green that glows and has uh, dangly fluffy balls uh, on either end of the handle and emblazoned also in neon green are the words John's pogo stick. Perfect. That's the one we're taking. All right. Let's some balls. <laughs> you take out the pogo stick and you are going to attempt to pogo. Uh, that is going to be a skill roll. Maybe he is luck. Uh, no, this wouldn't really be luck. <laughs> Honestly, luck would have been more like a pogo stick just happening to be there. Um, so this is going to be a straight roll. You can spend willpower to increase your roll, though. So, wait, do my skills help or no? No. No. Okay. All right. And I got a three, so we crash, I think. Yes. Uh, so uh, John gets on his pogo stick and... Um, Bounces for a couple of seconds and then uh, kind of tries to take a jump. Um, 
It doesn't go very well. He ends up hitting a, a turbo button, and the poker stick just launches him into the air uh, several hundreds of feet, and he's flying across the city uh, and bid for control. All right, uh, Scallywag, you have taken the day. Um, so you are now you. flying uh, through the air, leaving a trail of blood behind you as your uh, face, facial wounds continue to gush, and uh, the uh, pressure of your launch uh, presses the blood out of your system. Um, and uh, you are headed more or less toward the outskirts of the city, uh, and you crash down into a giant pile of yarmulkes, uh, which are Very all nice. stacked in a cart. Um, and it says uh, above it, just yarmulke cart, uh, two schlibnarks per yarmulke. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um I'm going to pretend that the blood spewing out of my face was like the nosebleeds in anime. <laughs> you know, that's cooler than what's really happening. There you go. You just <laughs> saw a hot chick. That's that's exactly what happened. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. John? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, we, we need to head further into the city. Okay. Um, First of all, we need to find some way to stop this bleeding because, you know, that hot chick was just too darn hot. That that's that's a a good point. That's a thing that yeah. happened. Yeah, we need to go get our face fixed. Okay. Um. What if I just squish a yamaka in there? Um. That. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That just that was a whole other image. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what was the last thing John said? Uh, he asked if he should just squish a yarmulke in his wounds. Right, right, right. Okay. No, no, no. That, that that's gonna that's gonna draw too much attention, John. It's gonna look too weird. No, we need to actually go get our face fixed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and then we need and then we need to find a guy fox mask. All right. Um, because that would that would cover up the wounds anyway. Yeah, yeah, I I like this plan. Okay. You're you're smart. Yeah, so let let's let's go into town and look for somewhere to get our face fixed first. All right, uh, you head back to um, some streets. You kind of have two options. You can either go on some of the main streets, or you can try to take the back alleys. Oh, definitely the back alleys. All right. Um, so you travel along the back alleys for a few minutes, heading deeper into town when suddenly you hear uh, a couple of thuds and some clicking behind you, and then a voice says, All right, you better stop where you are. Put your hands up, Boyle. Uh, John. Yeah. Put, put, put your hands up, bud. Okay, my hands are <laughs> up. <laughs> See, when you're interacting directly with another character, this is where you okay. just directly control John. Okay, got it. Okay, I'll turn around Okay. see who it is. All right, there are three individuals wearing long black coats, and they have big, bushy beards, which are clearly fake, um, the tips of which are uh, on fire, uh, sending up curling smoke. Um, one of them is holding a... A uh, baseball bat with a picture of a cutlass on it. Another one is carrying a uh, rubber parrot, um, which he is threateningly thumping against one palm. And the last one is carrying a uh, blunderbuss with an orange cap on the end. Alrighty then. You'd be handing over your spoils now if you know what's good for you.
I think we may have lost Wayne again. No, I'm here. Oh, you're um, here. You better do something or they'll start plundering your you booty. What do you guys think you are? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think you are, Blackbeard or something? <laughs> ah, yeah, we be pirates of the Encaridian. You be what? Pirates of the Encaridian. Of the Encaribian? Illidian, with a D, but you're close. Oh, so you've got a big D all up in there, huh? I know what it is that you like. <laughs> we like free booty is what we like, all right? Ow, hand over what you got. So you like a big D all up in your booty, huh? I believe you ought to use that joke, and we find it no more amusing than the first time. Tra la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, do like a little dance and try to shimmy down a different uh, different direction. Okay. Um, so they kind of uh, look at each other confused, and then one of them just shakes his head and says, Don't feed the trolls. Uh, they just become stronger. And indeed, you do feel stronger and have succeeded in trolling someone. So, <laughs> bid for control. All right, uh, so Jason and Wayne, go ahead and roll a d6 for me. We'll see which of you gets control. All right, uh, you've won by one point. So, uh, Wayne, you are still in control. You are running off down a, uh, a side alley, laughing your butt off, um, as you can hear the, uh, the three pirates behind you still arguing about whether or not they should chase you down and kick your ass. All right, John. We're free as a breeze. Now, <laughs> let's find that hospital or doctor's office or, like, whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, so so uh, you go a little bit further, and in front of you, you see two different stores, one of which has a picture of a syringe with a very long, thick needle squirting something red, and the other one has a picture of a hacksaw. Both of them uh, are advertising as expert doctors of all matters, physical, mental, emotional, or otherwise. I'm going to go needle the needle dog. <laughs> All right. You walk in. Um, and this time, John does get a nosebleed. Uh, there is a uh, tall, long-legged nurse uh, wearing a uh, stereotypical nurse cosplay outfit and holding an enormous syringe, almost as tall as she is. How about that? <laughs> Blood just squirting everywhere. <laughs> she goes, oh dear, looks like somebody needs an infusion. Uh, yes, yes I do. I need my uh, uh, face fixed. <laughs> uh, I'll fix a whole lot more than just your face. Um... And so she gestures to a blood-soaked uh, operating table with bandages and other um, viscera spread about in a wide radius and says, Go ahead and hop up, big boy. Uh, that, that, that's a lot of blood. Oh, and well. Viscera. <laughs> well, just look, look at your shirt. That's a lot of blood and viscera there, too. Uh, you, you've, you've got a point. Um, is, is that big syringe the only thing you use for treating patients? Oh, it's about the only thing I need, generally. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, sure, alright, <laughs> um, 
What's the other guy like? The one with the big saw on his side. Oh, he's a lobster man with giant saws for claws. <laughs> he eats his patients. And what do you do with yours? <laughs> oh, well, wouldn't you like to find out? Uh, sure. Okay. I get up on the table. Alright, so she rolls you over onto your stomach, and then says, This'll only pinch a little, and pulls your pants down, and a searing pain erupts from your back end, and bid for control. All right, uh, Jason, you have control. Um, you come to uh, several minutes later, you would assume, based off of the uh, distance the moon has traveled. It's probably been half an hour or so. You are now lying in a uh, gutter, uh, surrounded by three or four other bodies. Um, feeling around your body, John is uh, relatively certain he has at least most of his organs. Um, and seems that his uh, wounds have been healed and his blood has indeed been uh, returned. Uh, however, his behind still smarts significantly. Okay. Um, first things first, let's find anything resembling a shrine where we can see the moon. All right. Um, so John kind of wanders aimlessly around the ditch, and uh, after a few minutes, he comes upon a, uh, a clearing with burning torches, and in the center, uh, in a po huge uh, pool shaped like a pentagram of some red viscous material, um, there is an altar with a stone slab at the top. Um, surrounding the altar are a, a series of about a dozen or so black hooded figures chanting in deep, sonorous voices. Um, so let's do our best impression of a weird cultist and join their ritual, but actually pray to the moon instead, just covertly. Okay. Um, so how are you, <laughs> how are you planning to blend in with the cultists? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Is there any kind of, like, towel or blanket that we can use as a makeshift robe? So, looking around, there's a scrawny guy in a Hawaiian shirt, a long white beard, and khaki uh, shorts, standing by um, the pillars marking the entrance to the clearing. And he has a little sign above it that says, Cultist Robes, free, uh, uh, free for a kiss. Okay, let's give this guy a kiss. <laughs> All right, so you go up. Uh, he's got about three teeth left in his head, and he goes up, and he goes, Hi, Shabby! You here for the ritual? Oh, I am. Hey, goody! Well, go ahead and give me a speech on the cheek, and I'll give you your ropes. Um, how about... I kiss you on the lips, and you give me three robes. <laughs> Ooh, you got a deal, young man. All right, let's do it. All right. Um, well, show me the robes up front, though. All right, so he holds them up. Um, there are three pairs. All of them are mainly black. One of them is all black. One of them is black with a red uh, lining and belt. And the other one is all black with a metallic uh, golden lining and belt. All right. Those look great. All righty. <laughs> Gross kissing noises. <laughs> all right. Uh, you are pretty certain that you've caught something, but you now have three robes. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, so I get two of my two of my passed out buddies in the gutter, and I give the non gold robes to them, and we're gonna pass as a group of cultists. Okay, uh, so you uh, you kind of start needling them, trying to wake them up. Uh, one of them is a uh, 
young woman with uh, red hair, and the other one is a uh, middle-aged man, definitely on the fat side. Um, and they start to kind of groggily rub their eyes and look up and go, and uh, the guy says, last time I ever go to a, a hedge doctor, is that the right term? I think so. <laughs> a hedge doctor? <laughs> Who are you? No time to explain. Just put on this robe and come with me. Um... Do you have a skill that would help you convince them? No, I do not. Well, it is dark out, and I'm superhuman. So um, sure. I can if appear you... imposing. Yes, I will definitely give you that. Uh, you are definitely frightening in the dark moonlight. Um, I would assume you have glowing eyes and some sort of a tail thing going on. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I haven't seen this character, so... Um, uh, well, definitely the glowing eyes part. There's not really animalistic, more just ah. like animalistic instincts. There but. we go. Okay. Uh, so your eyes are glowing uh, brightly in the moonlight, and uh, he, uh, go ahead and roll for that. Oh, Oof. hell no. <laughs> Would you like to spend a willpower to push that to a three? Yeah, I do. All right, so subtract one willpower, and um, so the the two of them are uh, successfully cowed by your imposing presence and uh, put on the robes, and which one were you keeping for yourself? The gold-trimmed robe, obviously. All right. I'm stylish. Indeed. Um, so the three of you kind of uh, begin uh, to slowly shuffle uh, with your hands uh, pressed together, as you saw the... Um, chanting cultists before um, as you go down the walkway. And the cultists, as soon as you enter the ring of firelight, uh, their chanting grows louder. And um, one figure in the, the front of the group um, specifically begins uh, kind of chanting very loudly in a strange language that you don't understand. Um, and bowing to the uh, the stone tablet, and uh, you can see the uh, the I'm blood. About to be a sacrifice, isn't he? <laughs> and uh, you can see the blood boiling um, in the symbol around you. And uh, what does John do? Um, first things first, we pray to the moon goddess. All right. Um, so that is a success on that obsession and a new bid for control. Oh, I forgot I don't get to act after that. Damn. <laughs> my plan. My master well, plan. Well, you do if you get the willpower. That's true. So, we'll see. All right, uh, Jason, you have retained control. So uh, yes. you pray to the moon goddess and are still uh, in control in the center of this group of cultists. Um, and so now I preemptively tear off the robes of my new friends who aren't really my friends, um, and I offer them for sacrifice. All right, uh, so the purple cloaked figure goes, Ah, mighty leader, greatest among us, you have brought us a sacrifice upon this day, though in non-traditional garb. <laughs> ah, <laughs> let us begin the ancient ritual, which you, of course, have thoroughly memorized and can repeat without any assistance. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh <laughs> go ahead hmm. I, I think i'm going to instead of this uh futile attempt to to get this right i'm just going to howl for to, to see if i can get some wolf backup using my wilderness skill all right uh go ahead and roll for that 
God, <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> um, so you howl. Um, and everybody looks very confused, but otherwise nothing happens, and another bid for control. Okay, so now I have zero willpower. What happens now? Um, so now you are relegated to the back seat until, um, something happens to regain willpower. Gotcha, um, okay. So, I for example, a rest. How do you regain willpower? Um, mostly oh, right. when John rests. So if John rests for 10 minutes, everyone regains one willpower. Um, and then uh, uh, voices that are not active can't control John, but they can speak to both John and to the other voices. So um, <clears throat> does the fact that John just faked being a... Um, a uh, cultist whilst wearing robes and everything and then prayed to his own god and so forth i i might be stretching it but does that count as trolling or not is, yet uh, there has to be some sort of joke involved at this point you're okay. just kind of tricking people uh, if you okay. had if you managed to turn this into some sort of epic troll where like they end up sacrificing chickens instead of people, or you convince all the cultists that they need to take their robes off and run around naked doing the chicken dance, that would be trolling. Uh -huh. Okay. What about small-scale attack? Um, if I, like, blow them up? <laughs> if you can pull that <laughs> off. Okay. If you blow them up, that would be a small-scale attack. So, what was the role that, that Jason failed? It was uh, really He was trying to right? summon wolves to devour the cultists around him. At least I'm assuming that's okay. what he meant by backup. Yes. Got it. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, bid for control still, though, right? Yes, and Rebecca has already bid, so I just need one from you. All right, uh, both of you roll 1d6. Let's see who gets control. All right, that would be Wayne. Uh, so, Anonymous. Yes! <laughs> Anonymous, you are back in control. Uh, you are surrounded by cultists. You just let out a... Uh, animalistic howl. Everyone is uh, looking very confused, especially the two random people uh, you met in the gutter who you just um, tried to sacrifice. And, uh... <laughs> but nobody is, like, nobody is taking any direct action against you at the moment. I howl again and look at them as if I'm expecting them to join in the howling. Okay, uh, it gets very, very awkward, um, and just everyone continues to look at you with, like, these big eyes and blinking, and at this point you can hear, like, crickets in the background. I'm dying over here, dude. This is amazing. <laughs> Repeat after me! Ola! Ola! Tagu! Tagu! Siam! Siam! I wanna! I wanna! Saka! Saka! Bigger! Bigger! A pee pee! A pee pee! These are new oh. chants that you are teaching us, leader! They are very different! Yes, they are full of much power. You must not doubt their value or their purpose. <laughs> of course, great leader. How would we ever think to doubt one such as you? Uh, and so they begin chanting what you just said. Um, meanwhile, in the distraction, the ra two random ditch people uh, begin to like try to quietly sneak off in the opposite direction. Uh, and yes, that would control. count as trolling. So, success! Woo! Bid for control! Nice. 
That was short lived, but it was <laughs> fun. Yeah, you were quickly successful. But that's why you have to decide are you going to try for the easy ones or are you going to try for the harder ones? Because once you succeed at one, you lose control. Yeah, good point. But I think I'm the only one that's succeeded so far. No, um, Jason has also succeeded. One. The only one who hasn't is oh. Rebecca passed up the, um, Rebecca the passed up the cinnamon candy. candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I need a uh, bid again from you two. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab a snack. Cool. How dare you? Just kidding. All right, Rebecca, you have control. Um, all around you, you can hear the chants of, Oh, wah, tagu, siam, and I wanna suck a mega, a pee pee. So awesome. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> And uh, you can see that the the blood in uh, in the center is actually turning green uh, in the the big uh, pentagram uh, on the ground, and um, the stone at the top of the altar is actually beginning to rumble. I want to go towards the pentagram altar rumble stone. All right, uh, you walk toward it. And um, after a few moments, an enormous face pops out of the top of the altar going, And then uh, just as everybody uh, is looking really confused, you uh, uh, see a giant projection of uh, an ancient uh, human doing a dance. Uh, and it happens to be a man named Rick Roll. Okay, that's better than what Wayne was just doing, so... Cool. Okay. And Rick then might be doing all the of the cultists... Doing. You never know. All of the cultists' heads explode. <laughs> so gross! <laughs> and then uh, the ancient evil known as Troll Lord is released upon the world and goes out to uh, cause havoc. Does that awesome. count as a small scale attack? Uh, yes. Oh, man. We, we achieved a small scale attack? <laughs> yep. What did I miss? We blew, we blew up the cultist's head and released a troll. Yeah, so basically what you missed was that, um... The uh, the cultists managed to uh, summon the ancient evil troll lore, uh, who has uh, escaped into the world to cause unknown horrors to unsuspecting netizens. I want to keep going towards the stone and see if I can go through the portal thing that he came through, because I want to go to his dimension. All right. Uh, you pass through uh, a, a portal at the top of the... Um, I don't know, it's a ziggurat shape, basically. Um, and you fall through uh, shapes and sounds whizzing by in a uh, confusing or cacophony. Um, various things shouted. Just like uh, when I eat too much candy. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Various things being shouted from all quarters, such as things about Melones and Leroy Jenkins. Um, and then you crash down um, through the, uh, the firmament between the digital world and the real world, and you find yourself falling um, forcibly into your own body. Um, you quiver a few, for a few seconds and then take off uh, a helmet, which seems to be bolted in through your eyeballs, um, extracting the needles that went directly down into your nervous system, and uh, sit up in a moldy old apartment bedroom. Uh, the desiccated body of John uh, splayed out in front of your vision. 
I thought I was John. You are John, but you can see your body, and it is desiccated. Uh, that that sounds great. Can, can we move? Yes, uh, with some effort, you hear uh, popping and cracking with each joint that you free from its uh, rigor mortis. And um, slowly you rise from the bed, a uh, series of clicks and pops as your spine uh, forces itself back into alignment. Um, and you can see around you, you are lying on a four-poster bed with the tatters of... Uh, what were once bed curtains around you, uh, next to you, uh, on the, a, uh, bedside table is a, uh, book copy of Tron, and, uh, across from you is an old tube-type television. Hmm. Is there a door or a window, or I want to look under yes. the bed. Um, there are doors, there are windows, well, there is a door, there are windows, and looking under the bed, uh, you can see ancient dust bunnies arguing amongst each other over, uh, a small bag of, uh, candy corn. Uh, I'm going to put the dust bunnies in my pocket, because they're so smelly, I can die! <laughs> and I'm definitely going to eat candy corn while I look out the window. All right, the dust bunnies uh, squeak and uh, gnash at you with their tiny, sharp teeth in anger, uh, but being small and weak, they're unable to resist your uh, force, and your undead flesh ignores their tiny little teeth, um, and you place them growling and whirring uh, into a pocket and uh, are able to eat the candy corn. So that would be your success. Bid for control! Actually, I'm also going to count um, that as a rest, so everyone give yourself a willpower. Uh, John has technically been resting for some time. Perhaps too long, one might say. So is everything we were seeing like a virtual reality thing? Before? Who's to say? Bum, bum, bum. I mean, John is crazy. Is Jason here? Yep, he's still here. I'm here. All right, um, so Rebecca and Wayne, go ahead and roll off. All right, you are lucky today. Wayne, you have control. Uh, the sickly, sweet taste of candy corn still uh, gripping in your dry... Uh, parched throat, uh, dust bunnies uh, angrily uh, scratching at each other in your pocket, and the uh, smells of mold and decay surrounding you. You are standing in what appears to be an old bedroom. <sighs> There's no place like home. <laughs> because we're, like, desiccated. <laughs> Cetra is desiccated. Oh, Cetra, Cetra. Who's Cetra? Uh, he's the he's one of the um. Oh, what were they called? The Tomb Kings. Yeah, yeah. Cetra so. does not serve. Cetra rules. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to find a. Well, first I'm gonna take that copy of Tron. Okay. And I'm gonna dump out the dust bunnies and put it in that pocket. Okay. Uh, the dust bunnies immediately turn on you and begin trying to chew through your ankles um, pretty unsuccessfully. I step on them. Uh, they, uh, they squeal in agony and puff away, floating on the wind uh, back to their um, requisite parts, perhaps once again to collect under some furniture um, and to escape vacuuming for long enough to gain sentience as these did. <laughs> okay, so I take the Tron book, and I'm going to 
So try to find the nearest computer. All right. Uh, you turn around, and the nearest computer was strapped to your face. Um, no, uh, the nearest computer that doesn't strap to my face. <laughs> All right. You, uh, you exit the house. Uh, looking around, it appears to be a uh, oh, an actually, old. Actually, I take that back. I take that back. I want to inspect that thing and see exactly what it is using my technology skill. And All see right. Yeah. You, know. uh, you can see emblazoned on the front is an apple with a G through it, and it says "Gapple: The Future of Technology." Or Goople? I don't know. I like Goople better. <laughs> Goople, <laughs> the future of technology today. And um, along the side, it says Second Life 2000. Um, it appears to be a smallish device about the size of a smartphone with needles uh, extending uh, from the tip and uh, a strap to attach it to one's face. I'm going to check my pockets for a, uh, well, I'm going to check myself for a smart device, like a phone or a smartwatch or some such. Okay, um, go ahead yeah. and roll for that, and you can use your tech ability. What do I add for my tech ability? You just need to roll three or better because you have a tech ability. Otherwise, you would need to roll a six. All right, that's good enough. What did you hope to find? Uh, basically, you know, like a smartphone or a smartwatch or something that I could use to do Googling with. All right, you find a Google Glass equipped with Kali Linux. Equipped with what? Kali Linux. It is an, oh, yeah. a version of Linux designed for uh, security testing and hacking. Okay, I, um, I'm going to find out what year it is. All right. It says, it is the year question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Where am I? That's a lot of question marks. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, it says, you are in Jerusalem. Israel, birthplace of Muhammad, and Jesus, and Santa Claus. Cool. Um, I'm going to uh, try to hack into the uh, Israel um, uh, mainframe, like for the government for their, like, you know, nuclear missiles. and uh, You do not have access to any centralized computing on that level from your bedroom. Aw, oh, man. All right, well, let's go find some. All right, uh, so you exit the bedroom, presumably by the door, question mark? Yes. All right. Uh, you see that in front of you, you are in what appears to be a two-bedroom, or not a two-bedroom, two-story house. Uh, you are on the second story, and there is a rickety-looking hallway with several areas that have collapsed in. And in uh, down a couple of hallways is an old staircase and an ancient railing barely holding on by its fingernails. I'm going to carefully proceed down the stairs. All right. I will say that your uh, stealth does count here. But I do need to roll? Yes. Nice. All right. Uh, so you make it down the stairs. You're on the first floor. Um, worrying about the kitchen, uh, banging into walls and opening and closing cabinets and muttering to itself, is a cylindrical robot with a series of appendages sticking out in every direction, um, varying from whisks and blades to hands and other grasping appendages. Do I recognize what type of robot this is, or have I seen something like it before? Uh, you do not. However, on the side it says Mr. Handy. Hey, Mr. Handy. 
How uh, is it? Are things dandy? <laughs> so it whirs around to look at you and goes, Oh, Master John, you are back. I am so glad. I've How long been have I making been gone. <laughs> you have been gone for error days and error years. I have been making you breakfast. Would you like to eat something, Master John? Yeah, I actually do feel kind of hungry. Uh, so uh, he goes, oh, good. Here you are. And he puts down a bowl, and then he takes out an ancient-looking bowl of frosted mini-wheats and pours sand out of the box into the bowl. Eat up! A growing boy needs his nutrition! Uh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> don't mention it. I'm here to serve. Hey, where's the nearest internet cafe? The nearest internet cafe is on... Uh, I don't know. North Trump Boulevard. All right, let's go to North Trump Boulevard. Hey, John, do you have a car? Uh, I I think I might have a car. Uh, probably in the garage, I hope. All right, let, let's go to the garage. All right, uh, so in the garage, you find three cars that are not John's. And then one car sitting on the driveway that is John's. And this yeah. car is covered in about a half foot of bird shit. <laughs> is it even drivable without crashing it? Like, is the windshield covered in bird crap? It is, um, but with some scraping, you might be able to rectify that. <laughs> rectify, uh, rectify that? Uh, okay, um, how about the cars that aren't John's? Are uh, they are issue? blocked in by John's car. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to look for a stick or something to scrape crap off. All right, you find something that is brown and sticky. Is it a stick? Yes, in fact it is. It is a small stick. Perhaps one might even call it a twig. All right, I guess I'll try to use that to scrape the crap. All right, John pokes ineffectually at the car until he gets bored. Bid for control, and everyone regains one willpower. And then we are um, getting up on an hour and a half, so do people want to wrap up pretty soon here, or do we want to go for a bit longer? I think we're good for about another half hour, because I was planning on playing till about four, so. All right. Yeah. How about you, Jason? Jason, what about you? Sounds good to me. Perfect. This isn't crazy enough to run you off yet? <laughs> I guess Jason is a pretty cool guy. <laughs> there you go, Wayne. You said it was <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> All right, Rebecca, you have control. <laughs> so uh, it appears to have been about two hours. Um, it's started to rain. Uh, John is uh, like... Just waking up, he's still standing and uh, mindlessly poking at uh, his car uh, with a stick. I want to see if I can open the car and get in without, you know, worrying about cleaning it off. All right. Uh, go ahead. You do that. Um, and you are incredibly lucky. So let's roll to see if you get covered in bird poop when you try to open the door. All right, uh, so you uh, you uh, get in the door, you, you open the door, jump in like an action hero, slam it behind you, and as you do, the uh, soggy uh, bird poop 
uh, slides off of your entire car, and uh, the rain subsides, a rainbow appears over the car, and a glint of shiny red metal shows off from your perfect, perfectly clean, new-looking automobile. Hey, Gum, I should have just jumped in. <laughs> All right, we're going to start the car, and we're going to drive really fast towards the rainbow. All right. Uh, you drive incredibly fast toward the rainbow. Uh, go ahead and give me a, uh, a roll for believing that you can do such a thing. This is not going to be augmented, so you will need a six for this. You can spend willpower. Oh, start it! And I spent willpower, too! Uh. <laughs> All right, uh, so John drives as fast as he possibly can toward the rainbow. Um, however, uh, it turns out that it's actually just an, uh, a, a reflection of, refraction of light uh, by the mist in the sky that will always appear in front of you and can never actually be caught up to. And uh, he crashes uh, going about 80 miles an hour into a uh, stuffed toy store, uh, Build-A-Bear or something, I don't know. Um, and uh, it goes flying through uh, what would have been a window but was instead just a boarded up hole and uh, lands in a pile of yarmulkes, stuffed yarmulkes. Yay, more yarmulkes! <laughs> it's what you call a running gag. Wait, so do we bid for control? Uh, yes, because yeah, of okay. a failed roll. So, uh, go ahead and bid for control, everyone. All right, uh, Rebecca and Jason, please roll off. Oh, pretty good. It's my best of the day. <laughs> I know. Everyone except Wayne has been having crap luck. <laughs> ah. No. All right, Rebecca, you have control of John. Uh, you've crashed through a series of boards. Uh, you're covered from head to toe in splinters, but your undead body seems not to care. Uh, you're able to pop several joints back into position and then roll out of the pile of yarmulkes. Uh, you are standing in an old abandoned stuffed stuffed animal store. Uh, various animals of all kinds are around you in various states of decay and tatters, uh, all of them looking especially creepy. Um, and the uh, kind of the ghostly sound of wind blowing from outside, giving the entire thing a, uh, an otherworldly air. Cool. I want to steal all the unicorn toys. All right. And <laughs> then I want to ring out in the street carrying them and scream, It's so funny! I can die! <laughs> so you look around the store, and in the center of the store, on a marble pillar... Somehow, miraculously untouched, untouched by the ravages of time, is a perfectly pristine pink unicorn with a purple horn and sparkles everywhere and giant heart eyes. It appears to be the only unicorn in the store. Yes, I want it. All right. Uh, you acquire a stuffed unicorn. Actually, um, I don't know. With a level two skill, I should make you roll for that. So go ahead and give me a luck, a luck roll, which is one of your abilities. So a three or better. All right. Uh, you acquire the unicorn. Um, so, yeah, you pick it up and go, It's so fluffy, I could die! And run her out, run out into the streets. Um, you have succeeded in one of your actions, so bid for control.
Right, are you going to bid, Rebecca? Yeah. Okay. And if you, um, I'm like, gonna, if I'm I... my sheet. Yeah, okay. Cool. Just wanted to make sure that you're, you know, uh, we're bidding zero by not posting. All right, Jason, you have control. You are uh, running around in the streets yelling, it's so lovely I could die, while holding a unicorn that is just uh, farting sprinkles everywhere every time you squeeze it. Or not sprinkles, <laughs> sparkles. And um, looking around you, you see uh, that you are in an, uh, a deserted street. Uh, dust and uh, cobwebs are, are um, everywhere. Uh, a few coyotes uh, roaming in small packs seem to be picking through piles of trash and other odds and ends. Um, and occasionally you'll hear moaning and uh, see other ghouls such as yourself slowly ambling along the streets. Hmm. So, uh, John, remember that note about uh, Shakespeare? We should uh -huh. probably go check that out, even though that was in a dream. Usually dreams mean stuff, so let's, let's head to Istanbul. All right, yeah, that, that, that sounds pretty reasonable. Um, so you head out uh, toward the edge of town where you see a bus stop. Um, there are three ghouls sitting there, uh, a, uh, an old lady ghoul with a giant purple beehive wig um, who is holding a, uh, a small baby-sized ghoul who's crying loudly, uh, and she seems to be uh, smacking it in the head every few minutes, being like, be quiet, be quiet, and it just keeps crying. Um, and then the third one is uh, a, a male ghoul of medium build. Um, he is wearing a top hat and sporting a curly mustache. And what, what are they doing? Uh, they are sitting at the uh, bus stop, waiting for presumably a bus to arrive. Um, you should ask them if... Oh, wait. I get to be John now. Yeah. Um, so, does this bus go to Istanbul? Yeah, that'd be where it's headed. Or no. All right. British accent. Yup, that'd be where it's... That's a terrible British accent. <laughs> Indeed, that's where it's headed. <laughs> If you want to get to Istanbul, there's no better way these days, not unless you've got a teleporter, or perhaps a private jet. Do you know where I could get a teleporter? Oh, well, all you have to do is go to the hardware store and look for the teleporter section. Easy to find. Uh, let's go there. Alright, uh, so you head back the other <laughs> way. And uh, you see a, uh, a hardware section, uh, or a hardware store. Uh, it's got a huge sign with a big gear and wrench on it, and it says, uh, nobody gets harder than we do for hardware. Um, so... It says, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go find a teleporter All right, and teleport uh, to Istanbul. You enter the door, uh, the little uh, uh, warning bell... Uh, dinging quietly to announce your entrance. Uh, there's an old um, ghoul with a... Uh, uh, what's that mustache that looks like a brush? I don't know. If you know what I'm talking about, you know, curved on top, straight on the bottom, whatever that is. Um, and he's uh, wearing an old pair of overall, blue overalls with suspenders. Um, both the overall... He has both the overall straps and the suspenders. Um, and, uh, he's, uh, alternating between hooking his hands into the, uh, the overall straps and the suspenders, and, um, he's, uh, quietly chewing something, uh, and kind of just looks at you with one, uh, lazy eye, um, before kind of dismissing you as probably not going to cause any trouble. Um, so you, uh, you look around the store, uh, presumably still looking for a teleporter, and, uh, you're able to t find the teleporter section, uh, after a few minutes. Uh, you can see each one is rated on a, uh, ten-point scale, um, which, with each point being the, uh, percentage chance that you'll live, uh, while okay. using the device. Interesting twist. 
I say we get the best one, John, right. because we don't want to die. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, so you pick out a uh, teleporter that is rated at ten percent chance of of living, um, and uh, bring it up to the front desk. Um, so the uh, the ghoul at the front desk spits a live centipede into a jar um, that he's been chewing on. Not the jar, the centipede, and uh, closes it. The centipede immediately tries to scramble up the sides um, unsuccessfully. And he says, what? Can that be all for you? And then he opens up the jar and spits another centipede into it. Closes it again. Uh, yeah. I think I'll take this and a pack of those centipedes. <laughs> all right. That'll be... Uh, that'll be two fingers. Uh, my fingers? Or anyone else's. I'm not picky. Uh, let's try and cut off his fingers. <laughs> Alright, um, are you... It is night time, so you can go ahead and use your superhuman abilities. Success! Finally! Uh, yes! So John reaches up, uh, grabs his hand, puts it down on the table, and says, All right, then. And um, grabs the two of his fingers and breaks them off backward, uh, and then offers them to him. And he says, All right, you drive on, bargain boy! <laughs> All right, and then here's your centipedes. And he pulls a, uh, a pack of what looks like gum, except that uh, it has little legs sticking out of the sides of each of the strips. Um, and they're wriggling, um, and uh, passes them, and uh, you're already holding the teleporter box, so he just slides them across and says, have a nice day then, and then he opens the jar and spits a third centipede into it and closes it up. Okay, so John, let's take this thing outside, and let's try and teleport one of the centipedes <laughs> as a test. All right, uh, you go outside um, and set up the teleporter. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. It has major locations marked, and then you can also give it a GPS location on a three-axis plane um, from the center of the Earth. And um, where are you trying to teleport this first centipede? Uh, like two meters above where it's currently standing. All right. So it'll just, like, drop right back down. The centipede dies. Uh, it, uh, it, it disappears from off the plate, and then you see a series of sparks and lights and uh, little legs exploding in all directions. Um, and then a uh, tiny little uh, centipede head floats down to the ground uh, and just looks at you accusingly. Hmm. Okay, I oh, found a loophole. Okay. I found a loophole. I will get into a vehicle, and then I will teleport the vehicle. And the vehicle can't die, because it's not living. Neither is John. Oh, shit. Uh, the vehicle can still explode. <laughs> I forgot we're dead. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's um, take the teleporter. We can still explode. All right. Um, so you set it to Istanbul. Uh, and Shakespeare's house, which is listed quite clearly in uh, the uh, yellow pages that came with your teleporter, and uh, step on it, activating the pad with a press of your toe, and uh, let's see. <laughs> so you uh, appear in a uh, very ostentatiously... Uh, decorated uh, room with golden chandeliers and uh, bright, colorful trim in all directions. However, uh, your head is now located um, in your crotch, and your arms are where your feet should be, and your feet are where your ears should be, etc. Um, your <laughs> horrible monstrosity, uh, barely capable of scuttling along. <laughs> uh, and bid for control. Because that counts as damage, I would say. I think so. 
Uh, I'm fresh out again. <laughs> Big spender over here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's always the, the difficulty with this game is like, do I spend it to try and get control or do I save it up for an opportune moment? All right, uh, Rebecca and Wayne, please roll off. <laughs> wow. I so cannot roll today. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Wow. Oh All right. My God, it's wow. Right. <laughs> roll again. All right, so I guess we roll again. Yep. All right, Rebecca, you have control of hey. John. Uh, you are scuttling around, uh, kind of on all fours with your uh, legs coming out of your head and your arms coming out of uh, the stump of your body. Your uh, head is down in your crotch, so you're just dragging uh, your body with your shoulders along the ground behind you and uh, otherwise scuttling along more or less on all fours, uh, kind of craning your head to be able to see in front of you. I don't even want to know what it smells like right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, you are in a uh, ostentatiously decorated room. Um, there's, like I said, chandeliers and bright lights, and um, music is coming from uh, a room nearby, and you can hear uh, what appears to be actors on a stage going, Alas, poor Yorick, for I knew thee well. I am going to... I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Everyone is John. <laughs> Um, well, if you can't decide for too long, John's going to get bored and fall asleep again. That's why I was going to look around the room and try to see what there is other than actors. Uh, okay, well, you must have um, cut out because you never said that. That never came across. Uh, all right, so you look around the room. Uh, there appear to be uh, a couple of uh, strange dogs with head fishes, or head fishes, fish heads, um, and flippers uh, kind of resting by a fireplace and um, sitting uh, kind of off a ways you can see through a door, a large auditorium. Uh, and uh, sitting in one of the seats is a uh, oddly dressed man with a white beard who is uh, clapping and laughing along with the actors. Um, on stage, you can see the actors are strangely mutated, vaguely humanoid shapes, um, also draped in uh, oddly period European clothing, um, pointed caps with little tassels and uh, other flourishes. Um, and they're all uh, going on in Old English, various excerpts from different Shakespeare plays. However, they seem to be talking over top of each other and making very little sense out of the whole thing. So I'm going to approach the man sitting and talking with people and ask him if he's Shakespeare. All right. Uh, so you walk up and you ask him if he's Shakespeare, and he says, Indeed, Shakespeare, verily, I am such a man. 
And thou, thou must be John, or what's left of him. Hast thou come across some tribulations and trials on your journey to meet me here in mine home? It's nothing too bad. Oh, thou, thou canst say such a thing. However, thine complexion and thine shape doth betray thy true intentions. Thou hast seen some, as they say, some shit. <laughs> well, thine silence doth betray thine desire to hear more, so I shall... Give in to thou to what thine request so wordlessly put forth, and I shall have ponic what is that? Ponticate? Close enough. <laughs> pontificate, that's pontificate. what I'm looking for. I shall pontificate further. Indeed I hast summoned thee for the most urgent matter. I have found that thou <laughs> or I have found that there is the cult who lives in thine city, or at least the digital version of thine city, as thou must knowest that all have gone to, the, to yon second life. At least most have, those who can afford it and don't enjoy the uh, pleasures of the wasteland, such as I do. They appear to be attempting to revitalize an ancient god, an evil creature known as Troll Lord. Oh, you mean the one that we kind of let come through the portal thing and stuff? Gasp! What horrible news does thine bring? Oh, he faints. <laughs> Uh, and the uh, the actors on the stage have scurried off in various directions. Um, also, uh, screaming and uh, yelling in uh, fake old English. I'm going to slap his face. <laughs> um, so he uh, awakens with a sharp inhale of breath. And he says, Ah, thou must be John. Hast thou finally answered mine summons? Yes, and we also let Troll Thing go, and what are we supposed to do about that? Ah, Troll Lord is free upon the lands once more. Indeed, this is dire news. Ah, I do feel sorry for all the denizens of the digital world. However, we are more or less safe here so long as we eschew all technology and live as... Uh... Not Meta Knights. Dang it. Uh, I don't know. What are the people who hate technology? Amish. No, not Amish. Uh... It was originally named after the people who didn't like uh, weaving um, technology, and they all got up in arms. And Luddites! That's it. Ah. And we shall, as long as we live, as Luddites! And he uh, reaches over and uh, grabs your Google Glass and throws it forcefully onto the ground and smashes it with his foot. Cool, I'm going to uh, join in. Back of John's John's uh, head is like, no! Like I said, all of the other voices can talk to each other and to John at any time. Uh, they just can't control John unless they have control currently. Don't destroy the technology. No, 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 no. Don't do it. Let's go live in the mountains <laughs> as we were truly born to do. What right. is wrong with you people? Rebecca, what do you want John to do now? I don't know. I already joined in smashing the glasses. Oh, very good. You have joined the uh, cult of William Shakespeare. Allow me to uh, impregnate you with my seed so you can become one of my children. 
So yeah, John is running. <laughs> um, we need to keep running. <laughs> All right, so John uh, keeps running for some time, uh, eventually finding a uh, pair of roller skates and uh, going down the. I, I don't know. You're running for a while. You're out of the building. You're now on the streets of Istanbul. They're very similar to the streets of Israel. Um, Shambling corpses occasionally and uh, the like. I have no idea what happened. My sound just cut out. Ah. Uh, you are now on the streets of Istanbul. They're very similar to the ones in Jerusalem. Uh, with the occasionally sh occasional shambling corpse and uh, dust and dogs and that sort of thing. Try to find a unicorn. That's what you want, isn't it? Hey, I bet there's probably unicorns in that VR world. We could go back there. Actually, it's 4 o'clock. Should we go ahead and wrap up? Um, sure. Uh, so as, um, as uh, a shambling uh, Cronenberg, John slowly uh, wanders down the streets, um, seeing a strange world laid out before him. Off in the distance, he can see the green glowing wasteland stretching as far as the eye can see and occasional hulking monstrosities. Um, crawling along their lumbering misshapen forms uh leaving trails in the dust and um uh, he uh sl finds a uh, quiet corner and slowly sinks back to sleep the end dark yeah. <laughs> all righty um well, so that happened <laughs> Yes, that's almost as weird as the one where you guys ended up uh, fighting uh, Kim Jong Un with Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> this game is great. Yeah. All right. Um. So let's go ahead and do our typical wrap up. So I heard your voice last, Jason. Uh, what have you learned? Uh, or should I, I learned? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Don't trust reality because it could be virtual. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and then just going in again, order of last time I heard you, Wayne. Let me think for a minute. All right. Well, then we're going to go to Rebecca. What have you learned? I don't know if I learned anything new, but I relearned that needles are terrifying. <laughs> All the way back from the from about halfway in the game, where you pulled the uh, the uh, helmet off your face. Well, and the creepy lady with the needle and oh. the burning. Buttocks. There you go. I'd even forgotten about her. All right, oh, and then Wayne. <laughs> yep. Wayne, what have you learned? Reaction, uh, reality is an illusion. Bye, gold. Bye. No. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I learned that uh, that that um, that I should never expect there to be any semblance of sanity in everyone is John, because like the first couple of games we played, there was. It was like, you know, we're on an ocean liner or whatever. And the last few times we've played, it's like, well, it's like uh, like somebody smoked, uh, I don't know. What do you smoke? Shrooms? I don't think you smoke shrooms. shrooms. <laughs> somebody took shrooms in the middle <laughs> world. And, and I know you don't do that. So it's just like, wow, you have a womp, crazy womp. imagination, dude. 
Um, yeah, so, I mean, it really just depends on the story and where it goes. You yeah. know, I just kind of roll with it. No, it's cool. Actually, I think the Mad Libs thing was a really good idea. We should do that more often. Yeah, you know, I was happy with how that again. turned out. And that yeah. was also part of the reason that this one went so crazy is because <laughs> it started with a Mad Libs where you were standing in a computer or a hero sandwich, you weren't sure which, and you could smell of the, you, there was the obsessive smell of pants. <laughs> <laughs> what do pants even smell like? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I think this was a fun one. I'm glad everyone joined me for it, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye! Bye!